everything we have to fear is in war. Fear there is no substitute for victory. Let us never negotiate out of fear. We stand undivided, forever united, fighting hand in hand for the liberty we burn, for glory and honor for our sons and daughters, ever mindful of the lessons we've learned. Let the torch of freedom burn. Welcome to Wall Builders Live, the intersection of faith and politics. Thanks for joining us today. Visit us online at wallbuilders.com and wallbuilderslive.com. I'm Rick Green here with David Barton and Tim Barton. And uh, like many of our shows, guys, this is more the intersection of faith and the culture than just faith and politics because it's dealing with the uh, entertainment industry. And, and in any of these industries, it, uh, it, it is our job to let our faith influence how we act out there and make sure that, that, that people know us uh, as, as, uh, as, as the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah, you know, one of the things we've seen, and, and we've talked in recent programs about the book like U-Turn, U-Turn that George Barn and I did, and it really measures the fruits of how Christians are thinking right now and how the church is behaving, and in so many ways, it's just, it's not biblical. And, and one of the things that you see with that is the quality. People do not associate the term quality with Christians. They do not associate the term intellectual or deep thinker with Christians, uh, reactionary and, and, and short and they can't think through some, and that's not the way it should be. It certainly wasn't that way in the Bible. I mean, tell me Paul was a shallow thinker. I mean, he was educated beyond belief and could take anybody down in a debate, hands down. Same with Elijah. You know, Jesus, what he could do with his mind was sharp as a tack. He had embarrassed his opponents just by the questions he asked them. Um, and, and we don't think of Christians that way. The, the C.S. Lewis's, the J.R. Tolkien's, the, those kind of guys. I mean, that's a generation ago. It's it's kind of hard to, to find that caliber of, of folk associated with Christianity. But we see the same thing in Christian entertainment, man. I mean, it's like, oh, no, not a Christian movie. You know, give me something from Looney Tunes instead. I want something that's edifying. And it, it's a bad reaction, but it's been that way. And I've watched Christian investors on this, and, and, and they, they seem to hang on to their money. You get somebody like George Soros. And George Soros, back when, when George Bush was president, he said, I will, I will go to my grave broke if I can stop this stuff that, that George Bush is doing, if I can get him gone. And he's willing to take his billions of dollars and spend it all to change the culture. And, and our Christian investors say, no, 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 we, we got to pass this on to our kids. And God wants me to be a good steward over this. So I've got to save it up and, and hold on. And we're not willing to put stuff out there to change the culture. And so when you look back a generation ago to Hollywood and you see the Cecil B. DeMille kind of guys that were there and what they did with movies and why they came to Hollywood and they were the biggest, grandest movies that Hollywood ever produced. Ben-Hur and the Ten Commandments and Undefeated and Union Pacific and, and all these movies they did. Man, it, it's not Christians doing that anymore, but that is starting to turn, finally. Well, and let me back up for a second uh, just to, to kind of add on. Um, understanding that for, for years Christians have been really wanting to hang on to their money and not understanding the significance of culture and saying, I want to have something to give to my kids, which is great. And by the way, Dad, I think it's a great idea. You know, have, have something to give to your kids. I think that's valid. That's great. But it's, it's, it's misunderstanding thinking that the best thing you can give your kids is money instead of understanding, uh, you know, one of the things the Founding Fathers understood so well is the best thing I can give my kids is a nation that works. And part of that is, is driven by the culture. And so now Christians are realizing if, if we cannot, if we cannot help shape or redirect where the culture is going, then it doesn't matter how much money I leave my kids because they're going to be in trouble no matter how much money they have based on where the culture is going. But we've seen Christians get involved and we've seen some really incredible things in, in culture, in media, in music. Uh, you know, I, I was a youth pastor for a lot of years and, and it used to be that if, if we were trying to encourage our kids to listen to Christian music, I mean, you had Michael W. Smith and Amy Grant and, you know, there were like four people. <laughs> and, and there wasn't now it, it doesn't matter what kind of style music you like. There are Christians doing it and, and doing it very well to where you now have options. Well, it's the same thing that we've seen now in media where you now have Christians that are doing movies and, and they're not embarrassing. They're very good movies that you can feel good about, not just going to the theater to see, not just having to pay ten dollars to see it, but you can invite your friends and, and and feel good about it as a youth pastor, as a parent, knowing you can take your kids and not have to worry. 
this is a really encouraging thing, seeing how how far media has come. Well, and in fact, it's not just the creation of that media or, or, or the uh, the production of films and, and television, but the distribution of it and, and getting uh, Christians into that area of it as well so that those films can be made available uh, to families. And our guest uh, today is going to share with us how that's working, how it's growing, how you're having more and more access uh, to this type of media. Bobby Downs from ChristianCinema.com will be our guest when we return right here on Wall Builders Live. This is David Barton with another moment from America's history. Federal courts have made several amazing rulings recently, ordering the removal of a cross from a cemetery, banning religious holiday displays, removing the Ten Commandments from public view, prohibiting student prayers whether verbal or silent, and numerous other similar restrictive rulings. As one current justice has noted, the Supreme Court has now become, quote, a national board of theology. Our founding fathers would be astounded they designed the First Amendment to keep the federal courts completely out of this issue. As Thomas Jefferson forcefully declared, I consider the federal government as prohibited by the Constitution from meddling with religious exercises. The First Amendment was designed to keep decisions on religious expression out of the federal courts and in the hands of the local communities. For more information on God's hand in American history, contact Wall Builders at 1-800-8-REBUILD. Welcome back to the intersection of faith and politics. This is Wall Builders Live with David Barton and Rick Green. Thanks for staying with us. Our guest today is Bobby Downs. He's actually the founder of ChristianCinema.com. If you're not familiar with it, we got a link today for you at WallBuildersLive.com or go directly there, ChristianCinema.com. Incredible resource for great entertainment for your family. Bobby, thanks for coming on, bro. Hey, thanks, Rick. Good to hear your voice. Hey, man, you've been doing this uh, this entertainment thing for years. What have you seen in terms of Christian entertainment and the improvement, and not only the, the the quality of it, but the quantity of it. Well, it's it's been an amazing journey. You know, my wife and I were missionaries back in the 1990s, using the arts to communicate God's heart in over 20 countries around the world, and we saw the power of the arts uh, to do just that. And in 1999, we came back to to our home in the on the West Coast, and uh, where I was born and raised. And my brother Kevin Downs is a, a known uh, Christian actor. He was in the movie Courageous, and uh, he produced a movie called Mom's Night Out, and uh, we've been making movies for the last 15 years. And, and so I came home, and he said, uh, "I think I could, I can make, you know, make make these movies." And he said, "Well, what are they? They're, they're Christian movies, and they've got a, a gospel message in them." And I said, "I'm all about that. Uh, I, I love the gospel and, and love communicating it, and I love the art." And uh, so we made our first movie in 1999 for for $80,000, uh, uh, and within you know six months. We made all that the, the investors' money back, and uh, um, the film went uh, worldwide. It was the first movie uh, outside of the Ten Commandments um, and, um, and Ben Hur to be able to, to be played uh, in in the country of Afghanistan. Hmm. And and so we thought, wow, I I get to go out and make these movies, uh, and the the power of being able to, to reach uh, uh, entire nations with these films rather than doing over, you know, 300 concerts a year is what we would, would do back at that time. And so uh, we started a, a website called ChristianCinema.com in order to, to release the film and to, to get them out there. And before you know it, we've got over 4,000 titles on ChristianCinema.com, uh, movies that we've curated over the last few yeah, so you you went from from making a few movies that that you could make available, and and to now uh, being a conduit of all of these other movies that uh, that others who had this you know similar vision, wanting to wanting to spread the gospel through entertainment. Uh, now you're you're really an outlet for for all of those folks, and a, and a and a one stop shop kind of source for for Christian families that are wanting to get good entertainment. Absolutely, um, you know we've made over fifteen films. Um, Christian movies, but you know, to be able to provide a platform, um, a way for for Christian families in the church um, to find Christian movies under under one roof, um, that's really what birthed ChristianCinema.com. Um, in 1999, when I was looking for, well, how do you how do you let people know about these great movies that aren't gigantic budgets, that don't have big marketing budgets like Hollywood films, 
And then how, how, do you, how do you let the church know that they exist? And there was really nothing at that time. Even Christian bookstores back in 1999 did not carry Christian movies. Um, sometimes they would have a, a VHS rack, metal rack at the back of the store that they would rip you know, uh, videos out of, but there was nothing to say. And over the last 15 years, we've been a, a real big part of helping Christian retailers across the country see, you know, catch a vision for carrying uh, good quality Christian movies in their stores. And now you walk into Christian bookstores and you see – entire racks filled with Christian movies. And so it's been an amazing journey to see, like you said, the number of movies that have become available, the quality of the films has increased and they will continue to increase. And we, we've often been asked the question, what happened in 2014, you know, with all of these Christian movies coming out? And really 2014 story is really about a 15-year journey of improving incremental uh, improvements in the quality of filmmaking and also in the, our ability to market these films and let the world know that these films exist. Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of like all of a sudden it, it it hit critical mass in terms of of just the public even even knowing about it. It was like Malcolm Gladwell's Ten Thousand Hours. It's like Christian movie industry suddenly hit its ten thousand hours, and all of a sudden, That's you right. know, two thousand fourteen, boom! Everybody, you're you're, you're at least uh, realizing that it's all out there. Like you said, a lot of it was was coming in the previous years, but suddenly, um, I think you know, it looked like Hollywood and 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 the uh, the the big players suddenly realized how uh, much of a market was out there for faith based stuff and um and now you know the market itself is beginning to realize that the product is there um they just got to find a way to get it so so let's talk about that i got to take a quick break when we come back let's talk about how do you get it because you guys are kind of it's almost like you're doing the the amazon prime thing where you've got cuz you can go to christiancinema.com and and actually stream movies but then you're also doing sort of the netflix thing where you can get the dvds in in the mail as well so you're finding ways to get the content to the people that want it. Let's talk about that uh, concept and uh, and how that's working. We'll be right back. Our guest, Bobby Downs, ChristianCinema.com is the website. You can go there to find out more. You're listening to Wall Builders Live. This is David Barton with another moment from America's history. Shortly after the American Revolution, America had become the envy of the world. It still remains a wonder of the modern world as 219 years later, America has become the longest ongoing constitutional republic in the history of the world. What was the foundation upon which our founding fathers established this great nation? According to John Adams, the foundation was Christianity. John Adams declared, The general principles on which the fathers achieved independence were the general principles of Christianity. Now I will avow that I then believed and now believe that those general principles of Christianity are as eternal and immutable as the existence and attributes of God. According to Founding Father John Adams, it was the principles of Christianity which formed the foundation for American government. For more information on God's hand in American history, contact Wall Builders at 1-800-8-REBUILD. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on Wall Builders Live. Bobby Downs is with us. He started ChristianCinema.com and is working on getting good Christian entertainment into the homes of uh, Christian families around the country. Bobby, you mentioned in the last segment 4,000 titles. I assume you've sat down and watched every one of those, right? <laughs> <laughs> if there are only more than 24 hours in a day, yeah. yes, I could. No, that, that, it really is overwhelming, though. I did. I had no idea there were that many uh, films out there and and opportunities for for people to have entertainment. I, mean, I assume that's across the board. I mean, some of that's kid stuff, and some of it's drama. I mean, it it really is a little bit of everything. It's a little bit of everything. We've got documentaries. We've got uh, full length feature films that are dramas. We've got kids uh, movies. We've got cartoons. We've got a, a full array of, of films that we've curated through a, a very co complicated filtering process that we use, and it's called the the mom. <laughs> that and, is a complicated uh, <laughs> process right there. Let's just get that on the table. And um, and if it doesn't pass through mom's filter, it doesn't end up in the living room in, in our homes, right? And so really, um, we've we've really worked hard to, to bring films that uh, we know that you won't be in, embarrassed if you've invited friends or family over. 
Um, we we want to bring films that reflect your faith and your values and um, and really inspire and lift you up. So tell me about the distribution. So in, in the business world of of entertainment and and you know you that's really been for for years that was the 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 funnel was that all the secular guys controlled the distribution of of entertainment and so it was really hard if you made a christian film to get it to the audience how have you guys changed that well it's been really interesting the the notion is that is that hollywood funds uh movies like studios fund christian movies or fund movies and they don't they just they simply distribute the films. Uh, the money for the production of these films is typically raised from independent and private uh, uh, sources uh, throughout the country and around the world. And then those, those dollars are brought in, and uh, the film is made, and then the film is uh, set up with a distribution deal with a Hollywood entity that then goes out and uses uh, their muscle power to put it, uh, make it available on all these multiple you know, platforms like theatrical or online or um, you know, DVD, home entertainment, television, airline, you name all of these different uh, uh, various rights that, that they uh, exploit, they do that. And they do a really good job at, at, of it, and they do it on a massive scale. In fact, movies like Soul Surfer and Courageous um, uh, you know, were, were uh, benefited from that muscle power. Yeah. And, and the, the challenge is with that concept, though, is that uh, when a Christian movie that's made with resources from, from the church and, and uh, from the body of Christ um, are given over then to a Hollywood machine that, that ends up creating you know, $200 million in revenue, a large percent of that revenue stays in Hollywood to build bigger buildings in Hollywood, not back to the kingdom of God for, for God's work. And so that's the, that's the paradox. That's the challenge that we live in right now, which is how do we get that kind of uh, muscle power for distribution and yet keep the, the resources uh, in, within the body of Christ to, to build the kingdom? And so that's, that's really the, the question. That, that's the, the crossroad that we're at today in the Christian filmmaking world. So if if you if you have you know now a network of of folks out there that are making these kind of movies, then what's the what's the mechanism for you? I mean, when you create ChristianCinema.com, dot com, um, it, it was what is the concept there to to give people a chance to do something other than Netflix or Amazon uh, Prime, where you know that the content you're getting is going to be good for your family? Yeah, um, the idea with with the ChristianCinema.com dot com was to first supply. Um, uh, the, the Christian consumer, those that, that wanted um, good, wholesome family, you know, uh, content in their home, uh, and we did that through VHS back in 1999. And then we, you know, turned VHS off and switched it to DVDs, and it was like overnight that that happened. And we found that um, our consumer group is our, our late tech adopters, meaning that. Um, uh, but there are some people even still requesting VHS from us today, right? <laughs> when the world is long abandoned of uh, uh, VHS. Well, there's something similar is happening now with the digital and streaming in that we have in the last three years been developing a streaming platform for, for all 4,000 of those Christian movies. And we have about 1,000 movies available today that you can go to ChristianCinema.com and just click a button, and you can start watching movies directly from your computer or from your, your mobile device or, you know, put it up onto your big-screen TV. And we are slowly building that catalog and that library up, and we're having to move only at the pace that the consumer wants to move, which is do they really want to watch movies digitally or do they still want to own a physical disc? And so that's really the – we're in a, a transitional uh, period right now, and it's exciting because I think the – the digital world is going to open up uh, more content to um, Christian consumers uh, than ever before. I remember when I first got a Netflix account, I started watching documentaries um, like I'd never watched them before, right? And I was like, well, these documentaries are really interesting. Now, you have to watch out <laughs> with the kind of documentaries that are available on, on Netflix. Nobody's sitting there telling you, hey, this one you know, reflects your faith or your values. Right. Um, and so I think – with Christian cinema opening up uh, uh, the digital platform for documentaries, it's going to be a, just a wonderful resource for the church and for Christian artists and Christian filmmakers to, to create uh, documentaries uh, for us. Yeah. 
Yeah, no doubt. Um, on the on the rentals, though, in terms of a DVD itself, how does that is that? It looked to me like when I was looking at your system, it's it's no different than Netflix. You sign up, and you, as soon as you watch the movie, you mail it back and and get another one. Yeah. Um, so there's different methods. One is the DVD rental, which is we have a yellow envelope. Uh, it's something similar to Netflix's red envelope that you get in the mail, and uh, you, you load up your queue online, and then. We send them out to you one at a time or you know, two at a time, depending on which plan that you have. And it's a real low-cost way of trying movies out before you actually buy them or if you just like to rent them, and you, can, you can get them in the mail. And we've, we've got over 4,000 titles uh, for people to, to watch. And it, like you said, it would take a lifetime to, to go through all of those. And so there's, there's enough there for folks. It, do you think, as you watch the industry right now, do you think the the accessibility now to to – these these films and documentaries and other things will that in and of itself um, create a market where more of them are going to get produced? I mean, and will there be more um, you know faith based content and, and good entertainment that uh, that doesn't you know uh, doesn't have all the negative stuff? Yeah, I think um, there's a uh, we're just scratching the surface right now. Um, we're like you said, we're at a tipping point where I believe that um, there are a more Christian filmmakers and Christian artists than we've ever had before. Um, the arts are being supported like they never have been before uh, within the church. And so young artists, that are, whether they're writers or they're, they're uh, behind the camera um, or they're directing, um, those young people are coming up and realizing it's okay um, if I go into this business um, and this ministry uh, in order to, to do the thing that God's called me to do. And, and so we're, we're here to support young people in that way and and encourage them to get into the arts uh, to write those stories you know the storytellers are the ones that uh, really speak to a generation who uh, can really uh, um, you know give direction to a generation and so we cannot abdicate the arts to hollywood and allow them to to tell that tell stories we have to uh, be the storytellers of, of this generation Hey Amen. Well, this is a great time of year, folks, uh, for you to find out about ChristianCinema.com. dot com. You're going to be you're going to have time over the holidays with family. Everybody tends to watch more media and entertainment during that season as you get those days off and and families hanging out. So if you're going to do it, make it make it good entertainment. It's a great time to check out ChristianCinema.com dot com and get uh, get signed up. You can stream there and you can also uh, get them sent to you in the mail. Bobby, God bless you, man. I'm I'm just so excited to see what's happening in the industry and. And uh, people of faith uh, being willing to go into this area, and like you said, uh, be the storytellers. That's uh, it's such a great influence on the on the culture, and it's either going to be uh, Hollywood with that influence or us. And so, thank you for being part of uh, part of the solution. Thank you, Rick. That's Bobby Downs, ChristianCinema dot com. Check it out there. We'll be back in a moment with David Barton. Have you ever wanted to learn more about the United States Constitution but just felt like, man, the classes are boring or it's just that old language from 200 years ago or I don't know where to start? People want to know, but it gets frustrating because you don't know where to look for truth about the Constitution either. Well, we've got a special program for you available now called Constitution Alive with David Barton and Rick Green. And it's actually a teaching done on the Constitution at Independence Hall in the very room where the Constitution was framed. We take you both to Philadelphia, the Cradle of Liberty and Independence Hall, and to the Wall Builders Library, where David Barton brings the history to life to teach the original intent of our founding fathers. We call it the Quick Start Guide to the Constitution because in just a few hours through these videos, you will learn the Citizen's Guide to America's Constitution. You'll learn what you need to do to help save our constitutional republic. It's fun, it's entertaining, and it's going to inspire you to do your part to preserve freedom for future generations. It's called Constitution Alive with David Barton and Rick Green. You can find out more information on our website now at wallbuilders.com. Let the torch of freedom burn. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on Wall Builders Live. Uh, thanks, Bobby Downs and ChristianCinema.com. Guys, I don't know if you caught that or not. 4,000 titles. That sounds kind of like the uh, the Barton Ranch library. You guys have tons of movies. I mean, y'all are big movie fans. We are, we love movies. Um, we Really, we I, I grew up watching all these old VHS, you know, Roy Rogers and all the old classics. We were singing in the rain. We were white Christmasing before it was cool. 
And, and man, to have 4,000 movies at your disposal, my goodness. And not just 4,000 movies, but 4,000 movies with the right message, with the right content that, that you can feel good about watching, getting the right kind of things that you want your kids to be growing up on, knowing you can have a great movie weekend and really convenient. This is pretty encouraging. Yeah, and it's a, as I said to Bobby, good time of year, man. Everybody uh, tends to to watch more media in the holidays because you just have a little bit more time at your disposal. And the family's sitting around and eating all that food and drinking all that hot chocolate and uh, wanting to watch a movie. So here's a great way to get some good edifying, as uh, as David said earlier in the program, stuff that's going to edify. Well, absolutely. And one of the one of the, the favorite things our family gets to do is we do take a day or two, a night or two around Christmas, and we'll we'll get a fire in the fireplace and we'll get some popcorn. And as a family, we get together. And, and and we'll we'll kind of pick and we'll you know argue playfully about what movie we're going to watch and no oh, that one's dumb and oh we like this one, but absolutely some of our favorite times as a family to be able to bond to do something that's really encouraging and so absolutely families know how much fun it is to do this but to have now a great place where you can get great content Christian message the right kind of morals edifying. Man, what a great opportunity for families this Christmas. Well, from a cultural perspective, again, not just having Christians go into these arenas um, you know, at a superficial level, but now getting deeper and deeper into the economy of these areas, uh, and in this case, the actual distribution. It's all good signs of better things to come. Uh, appreciate you listening, folks. You can find out more about us at our website, wallbuilderslive.com. You've been listening to Wall Builders Live with David Barton, Tim Barton, and Rick Green. We stand on this.